Hello and welcome to the African Utility Week studio. I'm Ashley Teron, content editor of ESI Africa. Joining us this afternoon, we have Peter Flint, managing director of Armcoil Africa. Welcome, Peter. Thank you. How's your day been? Very good. Uh, arrived in Cape Town, enjoying it. Oh no, fantastic. <laughs> Peter, I'd like to ask you, having gained traction uh, in the market as a local motor and transformer manufacturer over the last decade, I'd say, um, what is the importance of including local, local content? We, I believe that we have a, a, a responsibility to the entire country to be able to promote local content. The, the reality is that We've got huge unemployment. Um, our manufacturing industry is declining. And much of that has been as a result of government policy. Government has, has not promoted uh, local government, uh, local development. They've also, uh, there's been issues relating to education and training, which they've not taken up. The uh, CETAs and so on have, have not, um, certainly not performed in anything like how they should be performing. They've, they've become a, a complete waste of uh, squandering of money in, in all honesty. But we, as an industry, we have to find means of being able to improve, improve productivity. And the only way in which we're going to do that is through, number one, education and training, and number two is capital investment. So. Do I believe in, in local content? Most definitely. Um, the way in which it's been done recently, I'm not so certain is, has been correctly done because as an example, Transformers have been recently been designated as, as uh, become a designated product, which means that any of the state-owned enterprises are legally obliged to buy local content. The problem arises in the fact that the DTI was having discussions with a working group relating to this, I made a decision some 12 months ago not to designate transformers. As a result, there was not sufficient emphasis put on local content, and then without any prior warning, they designated the transformers. So the, they haven't tied in the training side, the education, and all of that, and the raw materials, into being able to provide the, that necessary service which we're going to need in this country. Mm. So where do you think that training and skills development is going to come from? Is it going to be the, the private sector that's going to drive it? Or? It's certainly not going to come from government. That we can forget. We, we uh, as an industry, we have to recognize that the, the CETAs, the sector education and training authorities, are a disaster. Um, we cannot rely on them to, to provide training. As an industry, we pump an amount of approximately 1.2 billion rand a year into these training authorities and with respect the best that they could be regarded as being as, a, as a, is an extremely inefficient means of distributing that same money back to us again after having taken a huge cut off from a point of view of administration and so on. So we need to find a means as an industry to be able to start to do that kind of development. Um, I think we also need to recognize that much as many people didn't like the, the likes of the ESCORs of this world, um, ESCOR played a huge role in, in training and development in our industry. With, it therefore makes a lot, more, a lot of sense to be able to, for government to support our steel industry as they are now eventually starting to do so that we retain that local content in a major industry, which then supports and spawns other industry surrounding it. Our future has to be in manufacturing in this country, and we have to turn around the decline which is taking place. So local content, definitely, there is no question. The way you do it, there we can argue about. Mm. I hope that answers your question. No, it does. Thank you. <laughs> um, so you've touched on it around the, the local content, but what are some of the other key challenges that you've experienced um, operating in the African markets? 
Africa is difficult. Um, try and send equipment through to Zambia as an example. It's uh, your vehicles can take anything up to a week sitting at each border post. Um, why? It's unnecessary. We should be opening up the borders within Africa, particularly within Southern Africa at least, so that we can start to get this trade taking place. Instead, where the likes of Europe has broken all these barriers down, what have we done? We've put the barriers back up again. So that makes it extremely difficult to trade in, in, into Africa. Um, the, uh, I think that from a point of view of, of marketing though, I think that we're needing to be able to, to, to market South Africa as, as a manufacturing hub. And unfortunately at this point in time, we're finding that South Africans themselves are unconvinced about our manufacturing capabilities. So we're going to have some difficulty in convincing the rest of Africa of our manufacturing capabilities. We need to convince ourselves. We need to sort out our own house before we can start to really push off into the rest of Africa. Mm. So I wanted to ask you around the transformer technology and um, with society moving towards an energy efficient uh, way of operating. Are we seeing any new developments or innovations around that, that type of technology? Transformers really are probably one of the most e efficient um, electrical uh, pieces of electrical equipment. So yes, there is the opportunity for um, some, in, some efficiency improvements, but I don't believe that it's going to be significant. Where I think that there is significant opportunity is from a point of view of the maintenance. Our infrastructure, particularly in many of the municipalities, has deteriorated to, 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 really serious, uh, to a really serious state. And that needs, needs a lot of input as far as maintenance is concerned at, our, at municipal level. Mm. And how does a, a show like African Utility Week, how does that help arm coil in uh, in delivering your message, in delivering your, your brand and your product and what you do to, to the African market beyond South Africa? I think it raises awareness, obviously. Um, but I think that also what it does is that we've, we've picked up a lot of networking opportunities. Um, and I, I think really it's, it's, it's a case of marketing. We're getting our name out there, which it's, it's difficult to otherwise get your name out. The, the big, the big uh, multinationals are obviously well known everywhere, but uh, for a company such as ourselves, it's a lot more difficult. And a show like this develops that and gives us that opportunity. And then lastly, just some blue sky thinking. What are your, your top two predictions for the African power sector over the next five years? Number one is I don't think that uh, the renewable energy market um, is going to be economically sustainable. I think it's going to be difficult to sustain it economically on, a, on an industrial or, or a co commercial scale. Um, and I think that nuclear is the way to go. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> It's very interesting. Thank you. Thank you for being so honest okay. and open. All right. Thank you. Peter, thank you so much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure. We certainly look forward to seeing lovely and wonderful things from Armcoil. And yes, I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank I'm Ashley Turan, uh, reporting from the African Utility Week studio.